Good morning. It's great to have the opportunity to talk to you today about mobile ubiquity in the Middle East and to be able to be involved in this really exciting and interesting two-day event. Uh, over the course of the next 10 to 15 minutes, I'm going to touch base on a number of key issues related to mobile ubiquity in the MENA region. First of all, talking through some of the uh, key data points to just help set the scene before moving on to important existing and perhaps future potential policy considerations before leaving you with some reasons to be optimistic about the state of mobile markets in the MENA region in the future. Certainly when one looks at the uh, current state of play, there are a number of things that immediately spring to uh, your attention. The first is that, that a number of the countries across the Middle East have very high levels of take up of mobile technology. UE and Qatar lead the world in terms of smartphone penetration and consumption of YouTube videos via mobile devices in Saudi Arabia and UAE are also the highest across the globe. Yet at the same time, uh, these kind of take-up statistics uh, often hide a more sophisticated and nuanced story. So when one looks more widely across the region, you see there are actually uh, quite wide variances in terms of access to technology, particularly more advanced technologies. So there's very high levels of mobile take-up, but split that down further across 2G, 3G and 4G, and you start to see variances. And of course, there are really interesting socioeconomic factors that are also uh, come into play here with uh, affordability of services being a particular issue in a number of countries across North Africa. Drivers of usage of this technology also vary. Clearly, mobile has been a real driver for change, but there is evidence, most notably from a 2012 survey conducted by Nielsen, which suggests that it's uh, status, uh, and, uh, status ownership of devices rather than content and services that are delivered and consumed on them that is often the driver for device ownership. And uh, alongside that, one also sees, on the one hand, very high levels of penetration, but actually quite low levels of depth and breadth of usage, particularly of more sophisticated uh, smartphone technologies, where the number of applications used or downloaded is often very small. And the reasons for that can be everything from digital rights issues through to uh, other considerations around skills, lack of awareness of uh, the kind of potential that this technology affords, and so forth. And of course, this also all plays against a really interesting and challenging uh, backdrop of where you have uh, governments and societies that on the one hand are really trying to pivot towards being knowledge based and have access to uh, high end technologies, yet at the same time also trying to reconcile access to technology and the opportunities this affords with preservation of culture, heritage and traditional uh, local and Islamic values and those things are not necessarily always carefully aligned. Uh, one area where one sees this, this dichotomy is around uh, banking and commerce, both of which of course have been possible via mobile devices for some time, yet across the region and across demographics, face-to-face -face, um, uh, behaviours tend to prevail and are the preferred way of undertaking these kinds of transactions. Moving forward and looking at some of the policy issues that are currently in play across the region and also ones that I think uh, should be being considered by governments, regulatory authorities and civil society. Clearly the most notable issue, one that is uh, getting perhaps the most attention, is focused around closing digital divides. And these are multiple across the region. So on the one hand, uh, they're geographic. Most noticeably, there are clear differences between uh, mobile ubiquity and mobile services, affordability and so forth in North Africa versus the Gulf countries in the GCC. But also when one looks at particular demographics, you also see uh, digital divides in, in that arena. Um, no surprises really out that uh, rural communities and women perhaps have less access to mobile services than might, might be the case in other environments. But you might be a little surprised to see that actually there are some real issues around, uh, around youth access to this technology, particularly in terms of skills and being able to harness the sort of full potential and benefits that mobile technology affords. Alongside trying to tackle existing digital divides, I would also suggest that policymakers need to be thinking now about new and future divides and trying to put potential remedies in place for that. So uh, one issue here is around 
uh, uh, sort of what happens next as smartphone penetration across North Africa and the Gulf regions uh, begin to align. There's data from the GSMA that was published at the end of last month in a very extensive report about mobile in the Arab states, which suggested that by 2020 there will be an alignment uh, in the adoption curve for smartphone technology across North Africa and the Gulf. Yet, of course, the likelihood is that uh, North Africa, by that point, sort of six, five, six years from now, will have adopted 3G technology, but 4 and perhaps even 5G will then become the mainstream in the Gulf. So on the one hand, you can say there is a parity in terms of smartphone ownership, but of course a big difference between what you can do via a 3G service and 4G, and indeed between more basic smartphones like the Mozilla $25 phone and the latest device from Apple or Samsung uh, or whoever. At the same time, uh, I, I think there were also some really interesting issues around uh, how mobile friendly services or mobile services are uh, created in the region. Uh, a lot of government bodies and authorities often have a very wide range of services that are available via mobile, uh, yet their take up is very low. Now I've touched on some of the reasons for that before, some of that is around awareness, skills, capability and so forth, but I also think that a lot of the time these services are devised because the technology allows you to do it rather than because actually it's what consumers want. So having a more user-centric design around the creation of uh, new mobile products and services at a range of different levels and by a range of different providers I think is really important as of course is making sure that those services work across a range of different mobile devices. Arabic digital content online is also a, a big policy issue uh, in the region but one that perhaps people are not necessarily considering in terms of mobile. So we know that uh, in proportion to the number of Arabic speakers that there are around the world, the amount of digital content that is available online is very small. Much of that content is also uh, not necessarily of high quality. And where there have been efforts to try and energize that sector, they tend to be based around uh, digitizing um, cultural and heritage content, more sort of traditional uh, public service material, if you like, which clearly has a huge uh, civic value, but is not necessarily ever going to be mainstream and reach large audiences. So again, this is another area where I think being more user-centric could help and could help to try and drive uh, consumption of Arabic digital uh, content, both online and indeed via mobile devices. And, I, and this chart, uh, which is from a very extensive data pack produced by the social media agency We Are Social in Singapore, shows that, uh, interestingly, despite the very high levels of um, mobile devices across the, across the region and indeed some high levels of mobile content consumption, particularly of YouTube, actually in the region uh, the uh, majority of of, uh, of browsing and web traffic is coming from PCs rather than mobile devices, even in countries which sometimes have quite high levels of mobile uh, take up. So trying to encourage and help people to realize the potential to consume content via mobile, making sure that material is, uh, benefits from responsive design uh, and so forth are all things that need to be factored into this mix. Finally, I also wanted to draw attention to some issues around uh, privacy. These are not necessarily unique to the Middle East, and certainly post-Snowden are much more on the radar than perhaps they ever were. Uh, we at uh, the Ministry of Information and Communications Technology, ICT Qatar, which is where my uh, current day job is, did a project with the Oxford Internet Institute recently, where we surveyed just under 3,000 internet users across 14 countries. Uh, to explore issues around uh, user behaviours and privacy concerns. And one of the most striking conclusions from that was the fact that audiences in the Middle East were very strongly against uh, data repurposing. So they didn't want data they had provided for one purpose to be used for something else. Yet at the same time, they were also quite relaxed about the collection of their, of their data, uh, presumably suggesting that actually they didn't think this kind of data repurposing that they're so philosophically against was going on that much. So clearly, for me, there are a couple of things that stem from that. Uh, one is around raising awareness amongst uh, internet users about what happens to their data. 
uh, and training and educating users about that, but also having very clear and robust uh, policies and rules and regulations in place so that that uh, trust and that data is not uh, potentially abused. Finally, if one looks towards uh, the future and some reasons for, for optimism about the state of mobile markets, uh, we've already seen that, uh, that they have grown uh, hugely in the Middle East over the course of the last decade in terms of the number of connections. There is that positivity of uh, uh, North Africa seeing a very high level of potential take up of uh, smartphone devices over the course of the next five or six years and so forth. And uh, I think there are five different things that, that give me real cause for, for optimism about the future of these markets. The first is, is uh, the, some of the unique demographics of the Middle East, uh, like a number of other uh, emerging economies and, and regions. Uh, there's a very strong youth skew, um, and a number of countries in the region have very large youth populations. And of course, these are people who are very tech savvy uh, and they've grown up with mobile technology. Uh, so uh, I think they're very confident that they will continue to make the most of that uh, and they're very keen to do so. Uh, yet at the same time, they're also very aware of potential negative impacts of mobile technology and its ubiquitousness as well. There was some research produced a couple of years ago by the consultants Booz & Co with Google where one of the most striking conclusions was young people saying they felt that ICT was potentially detrimental to uh, family relationships and a recognition that many young people increasingly prefer to communicate via devices rather than face to face. So this is an issue that one needs to, to watch but I'm hopeful uh, can be remedied. There are great case studies and examples of uh, really interesting things that are happening in, in this in this space. Uh, is it Anu, which is a mobile website allowing artisans in Morocco to sell uh, content around the globe, and it involves uh, uh, training for uh, for them. Really interesting digital inclusion work and activities, and uh, also an opportunity to create new markets that might otherwise not be possible uh, for these kinds of communities. Uh, and you can see a bit more about them on their website, which is below and unfortunately um, cropped uh, slightly on this presentation. Uh, there's some interesting things happening in terms of uh, rollout of new services and collaboration. Countries that had historically struggled to enjoy 3 and 4G technology, like Iraq and Algeria, are now starting to see these markets emerging. And there was an MOU signed earlier on this year by the eight major mobile operators across the region to look at network sharing, which uh, has the potential knock-on effect of uh, both reducing prices, but also broadening access to, um, to mobile technology, particularly for rural communities. We find also in this space that if one looks at some of the issues around um, uh, censorship or concerns about what's being shared online, uh, I'm optimistic about the fact that actually we find that audiences find their own way around some of these restrictions. So, um, or that they're, they're very um, aware of potential implications about what they say, uh, say online, and they're finding creative and innovative ways uh, around that. One um, example of that has been the rise of chat apps um, and groups on things like WhatsApp as an opportunity and platform for people to discuss the news, politics, religion, cooking, fashion, etc., and having the kind of conversations that perhaps in the past used to be on more open networks like Twitter, uh, but they're now in a more perhaps controlled environment. Uh, and we're also seeing people taking technology and uh, mobile platforms and subverting them for completely different uses. Um, Instagram and WhatsApp, for example, being very popular platforms in uh, parts of the Gulf for mobile commerce, which was not how um, the founders of those uh, services probably ever thought they would be used. And finally, we're also looking at the fact that that across the Middle East there is a good parity in terms of access to technology uh, compared to other, other regions. So I think that too also gives me uh, reasons to be cheerful and optimistic about the way forward for mobile markets in this part of the world. Here are a few links to some additional uh, information sources if you want to find out more about some of the issues I've touched upon um, over the course of the last 15 minutes. This is a fast moving and vibrant and really interesting space. Do try and check out some of those if you get the chance. Uh, and of course, you're always welcome to uh, drop me a line and ask me questions about anything that you uh, would like to know more about. Thanks very much for listening. Cheers.